Good afternoon, Southwest Florida. I'm Bree Walling. This Naples Herald lunch break is sponsored by Conditioned Air, the comfort people since 1962. This afternoon, we'll tell you about FGC's Sunday selection, Naples' diverse workforce, and more. Today is Monday, March 13th, and this is the lunch break. Collier County had the most diverse workforce in the state for much of 2016. The Industry Diversification Project, a project by the Regional Economic Research Institute at FGCU, measures the economic diversity in industry and workforce in both Southwest Florida and around the state. Released quarterly, the most recent report ranked the Naples metro area the highest among Florida's metro areas. In the project's Industry Diversification Index for the third quarter of 2016. The report attributes the area's higher diversification during the summer months to the relative lack in demand in retail and hospitality sectors, which are heavily reliant on the tourism boom which comes in winter. Data released through the IDP is gone on a six-month lag, so Wesley expects that the area's index score will shift downward as they compile data for the winter months, which covers the highest tourist season in southwest Florida. FGCU's men's basketball team is staying close to home for the first round of the NCAA tournament. The Eagles will be a number 14 seed playing a number 3 seed Florida State at the Amway Center in Orlando on Thursday at about 9.20 p.m. Waiting for a week by selection, CBS, the network with the exclusive broadcast rights to reveal the tournament bracket, made the Eagles wait until the very bitter end, with FGCU, the 66th team, to be revealed on the screen. Not that the excitement was hard to hide, Eagles coach Joe Dooley said it's the best month of the year and the Eagles are starting to look like they're getting used to this whole Selection Sunday thing. Players were calm and businesslike as they sat along the baseline of the very court where they clinched their NCAA tournament berth. Both the Eagles and the Seminoles will likely have strong supporters following their teams to Orlando. But for those unable to make the trek, tune in on Thursday for the NCAA tournament. The world has lost roughly half its coral reefs in the last 30 years. Scientists are now scrambling to ensure that at least a fraction of these unique ecosystems survive beyond the next three decades. The health of the planet depends on it. Coral reefs support a quarter of all marine species as well as half a billion people around the world. The speed of the destruction is what alarms scientists conservationists as damaged coral may not have time to recover before it's hit again by warmer temperatures. To make matters worse, scientists are predicting another wave of elevated ocean temperatures starting next month. Even if the world could halt global warming now, scientists still expect that more than 90% of corals will die by 2050. Without drastic intervention, we risk losing them all. Scientists don't want to leave it to chance and are racing ahead with experiments they hope might stave off extinction. Ruth Gates, director of the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology, optimistically reminds us we've lost 50% of the reefs, but we still have 50% left. Read more about the newest efforts at NaplesHerald.com. And that was the lunch break for today. I'm Bree Walling. The lunch break airs Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. right here at NaplesHerald.com. And don't forget to check out our morning report that also airs Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.